welcome back. Uh, Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond, Nine Don Professional. This is going to be game 36 of the AlphaGo versus AlphaGo series. Each game, uh, amazingly, uh, more exciting than the last, at least as, as far as I can tell. So, uh, and I, I just took a quick preview, Michael. Looks like we're in for some more fighting, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the most in, uh, interesting part for me is the way AlphaGo handles ladders. Uh -huh. um, because, you know, um, we know that Leela has issues with ladders sometimes, although yeah. that, that comes and it goes away sometimes. <laughs> right now, I don't think it has that much of a problem. I think right. it might change with the, the weights, you know. Right, um, right. But AG never really seemed to have that problem. Uh, and it could be the superior computing power, or it uh -huh. could be something they did with the program. Um, it's sort of interesting. But it did devise sort of original ways to handle ladders, which is what we're going to see today. If you want to support this streaming, and we would love it if you do, uh, then uh, Stephen will put up a link where you can just uh, do it easily and securely online. And, uh, and we thank you in advance for uh, doing that. We appreciate it. Uh, as always, thanks to the American Go Association and to all the members of the AGA uh, who have been supporting us from the very beginning. All right, so uh, this is going to be the, the the ladder game, right? It's a ladder game, I think. All right, let's take a look. Oh, and, and uh, as always, folks, you can uh, jump in, ask questions. Uh, when Michael uh, puts me to the test, I'm going to turn to you because <laughs> <laughs> we're going to crowd. We're going to crowdsource okay. it. We're going to crowdsource it. All right, over to you, Michael. All right, um, star points and one, three, four points. So we play very standard for modern. Uh, after um, AlphaGo, this is very standard uh, stuff, the uh, early 3-3 invasion. Um, White plays a Kakari. Um, and now there's this move. This is actually, um, there's an identical game. Uh, I think it was game 19. Yeah, mm. game 19 up to this point, in which White, um, White played this variation. White played here, uh, the Kakari, and Black played the next move. So. It's a good example of what Black's next move is in the upper left corner. Mm. And White played the double card right? and, and this is game 19, so you can look it up if, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, but in the, this game, White played this, which is the local, the local move nowadays. Like, you could, could expect White to be... Uh, White could have extended on the third line, like here, uh, but that's not so common. And in that case, um, White's direct, the direction of White <coughs> ball would be in the wrong direction, probably. Mm -hmm. So um, if I was planning to extend on the third line like this, White probably would have covered on the other side, um, going back just a few moves. So uh, White plays here, and this is where we have um, we have two ways that White could have played. Um, so this was the game move, and right now um, in 2020, this is sort of becoming a little bit old-fashioned. Like it's it's um, out of trend right now, I think. Um, although it could come back. Um, mm. And cutting here is the more common move. And right. um, AlphaGo, even in this series, is playing um, a lot of variations. It, it, the thing I like about this series of 50 games is that um, the way they have it set up, AlphaGo has a lot of, seems to have a lot of freedom to play different game, different, mm -hmm. different moves. Um, and it's not like it's playing the same pattern every time. So it's, there's a lot of variety. Uh, so, so far, this is a very common Joseki. Um, if the latter favors Black, uh, then Black could, uh, let's have Black play here, for instance. And in this case, the latter favors White. So um, we might guess that maybe the fact that this breaks the latter might have something to do with White playing that. Because without that exchange, without, I'll mark the Black stone too, without this exchange in the lower right corner, the latter would have favored Black. Um, when the latter favors uh, white like that, usually uh, this is probably bad for black. Like if, if white had a bad ladder and played something like, then white would play something like this. This gives black a lot more potential uh, later in the game to be, for, black might start by playing something like this, but later in the game, black will have moves like bumping against white here or um, playing a diagonal move here to move out with that one stone and there would see, be some anti there. Whereas um, it's better for white, I think, if white has, for the time being, taken it in a ladder. Mm -hmm. um, 
so when the latter favor is white, uh, usually you see black playing this way. Um, this would lead to this kind of variation. Um, this is just one example, but it, I, I'd say this is the most modern version of what people do. And then black has a choice of running out with the two stones immediately or leaving it for a while, maybe. Mm. Uh, and a lot depends on how that turns out. Like later, next black could be, um, black could continue with extending or black could continue with a diagonal move here, maybe. Um, black does have ways to move out. Of course, white also has fairly strong positions, both in the center and on the left. So it's not really a big headache for white, this black. White, white probably will be on the attacking side. Hmm. It sort of works well with this position white has in the lower left, a strong position here. So I would be happy enough with white. Um, and right now, that's a more common way for white to be playing. To, um, just to go back to that point, um, the cut, the cut at this in the corner on the second line. But Alphago plays a double honey. This also has the idea that white wants to build on the left side. And here again, we um, this is the game move. And it used to be like this is the move that Alphago is playing in this series. It's the move that we're seeing in this series. Um, and it used to be like a no-brainer, it was obvious move. Um, nowadays, uh, Leela at least is suggesting moves like this. I think um, a number of the programs are suggesting moves like this or the solid connection on the fourth line. In this case, I think the hanging connection here works better with the left side for this. Then white could play away. Um, three is an important point. Um, right now, people like to play the double, the two space pincer there on the lower side. Um, so this this is what I would suggest. In the game, white plays here, and in, in this case, it's good for black to capture on the left side, because white did have a lot of potential there. With, with this position right. here, white did have a lot of potential on the left side. It seems to be working for black. <coughs> and we see that white is actually playing on Atari on the fourth line, sort of asking black, is black going to take the one stone or connect? If black connects on the third line, then white gets to Let's just do a variation. If black connects on the third line, white gets to play this with Sente. So that would be um, giving white too many forcing moves. So right. it, it makes sense that black takes the one stop. So that finishes that local fight. Um, and capturing the one stone on the second line is it's not an important, it's not important right now. So white jumps into this BV2. Very typical uh, alpha go. Mm. And black covers on this side. And we have an identical position here. And again, it could be the same variation, like the same variation would work. Uh, black does play the Hane. Um, and so up to this point, it's the same. Also, uh, Black could have played the cut. Let's put a variation for the cut. If mm. Black plays the cut, uh, we could even get into the same variation that I was talking about before. Right, right. <laughs> and here again, the letter favors Black. So if white just plays here, then black's going to be able to capture in the ladder. And my feeling is that if uh, if the ladder works, then this is good for, in this case, the black side, the side that started with a star point. Uh, but in the game, black plays a double honey. Again, this also um, depends on a ladder to a certain degree. So white uh, plays here. And it's interesting. Like, again, I think if black had played the cover covering on the second line, maybe we would have seen this variation. So it would have been identical. Uh, because white does want to, the, the right side also is an area where black had potential. So it makes sense for white to be um, coming into the right side. Mm -hmm. So maybe we would have seen that. And again, I would say that um, in a modern game, I think there would be potential for black to be playing something like this or something like this. It would be more popular nowadays and just giving white that extension on the upper side. Um, because when black plays here, it does, does give white the option of reducing the side. But in, this is also, it's a bit more unusual, cutting on the second line with this timing, but it's also played. It's very similar to that variation I was showing you before, mm -hmm. where um, I'll, we'll just run through the moves once more, where black plays the squeeze first and then takes. There's this variation, which is the more common one, but this game, this game move with black cutting now, it's very similar. Uh, white does cut once, and 
now you see white doesn't really have the option of playing the knight's move. Like if black had already played the squeeze, then white would play the knight's move and we would get to this position. Uh, but when white plays the knight's move now, black always has the option to cover here. So it is, the knight's move is not working so well. So it makes, and um, just one more variation extending here uh, would not be good for white because then black would get the squeeze and this stone here would be obviously more efficient than the knight's move. It's not yeah. efficient. Um, so that's bad. So it makes sense that white just captures the one stone. So now white's completely alive in the corner um, and doesn't have to play on the side. So it's a given, there's a plus and a minus to that. There's positive and negative sides. And black captures in the ladder. So this ladder is pretty important in this variation. Like if the ladder did not work for black, black would be playing something more like this and um, would not be necessarily attacking in the, the following fight. Like white mm -hmm. would be able to push through here and maybe um, black's whole group on the upper side would be in danger. So it would be an even fight at least. So it's important that black could capture no ladder. I see what you and mean white, about the ladders. We've had, we've had two already. We've had two ladders and now white has played a ladder breaking move. This move uh, does uh, affect the ladder. And it's the question of how does black answer this? We could make this a problem. Just to give you a hint, uh, when I was a young player, uh, my teachers or my um, other Go players would be a bit annoyed if I wanted to play a move other than this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th this used to be called the Honte, or the, I guess it would be the Honest Move. In honest this, move, something yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very, one of those- No longer, yeah. no longer those... true. No. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, so, it's honest in terms of sort of correct, but but you're saying that that's changed, right? Well, you see, it, it uh, gets rid of any potential that white might have to escape with that stone. Um, it does make a difference um, when black, um, for instance, later on, black might be covering here or playing something towards the upper side. It does make a difference to have that white stone taken off the board. It may, gives black a more secure position in many ways. Um, but... Uh, Actually, just to give you one more hint, um, the AlphaGo that was playing against human players in 60 games on the internet, um, it seems to be a bit different from this version of AlphaGo in that um, it was playing a way that is closer to what GoSagan was playing. Um, while I, was, I, was, um, I would get into trouble if I didn't play this move, GoSagan was actually um, suggesting moves like this. Um, a more oh, efficient. Oh yeah, right? I remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. actually, uh, the program, the version that we call Master, um, yeah. that played on the internet at that time, it did play this move a, a couple of times, I think. Yeah, it's a um, fun, it's a funny looking move, right? It's a funny looking move, but Gosegan liked it. And towards the center, it's relatively secure. Like White doesn't have any good. Um, White doesn't have any good ladder breaking moves inside here. They would be, all be sort of suicidal. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And so White doesn't have any good uh, ladder breaking moves from the center. White does have a little bit extra potential from the other side, like if White plays at the mark point now. But that's probably not so important. So it, maybe it's more important to have a stone towards the center. So that was the reasoning that Gosegan had when he was suggesting moves like this in very similar positions. And I think the AlphaGo that was playing against human players in that 60 game series sort of was um, at that point, uh, maybe the uh, the weights were similar to what Gothagen liked. Mm. But after that, it changed. And for instance, um, this AlphaGo, let, correct me if I mixed up, this is not zero, but it's very similar to zero in, some, in the way it handles some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Yeah, I, I was correct. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it's not sure. Zero, but it's very similar in some ways, though. Yeah, that's my understanding. Um, I'm sure somebody yeah. can correct us if we're wrong. So, um, so I showed you this move, and I showed you. Uh, well, that was just that didn't, wasn't a serious option, but I showed you this move. I show, so I showed you these two moves, and the move that was played in this game was not one of those two. 
It was sort of taking it one step further. I'm looking at the uh, the shoulder hit, um, or or maybe the counter pincer. Okay, you're talking about J4 here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I expect White would probably play something like this for the time being. Um, it does have a bad effect on the black stone in the lower left. It does. Um, and it doesn't really get rid of the um, idea that White at some time is going to play a, a ladder break somewhere towards the right mm -hmm. side, maybe somewhere close to the mark point. Um, so that's that's not the way AlphaGo handles it. Well, that's more other, like the way that Lila would want to handle right, it. Right, right. I mean, the other thing, and, and I don't know if this helps, and we should crowdsource it, but what about something like, you know, K3 sort of breaking up White? Um, too too obvious. You know that's not even a ladder breaking move. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. I mean, well, well, I don't know. What about just smacking up against it? I suppose, but you know, that's probably not going to work either. Uh, You're just have, on the wrong track, Chris. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me, uh, let me let me let me let me turn, let me turn to my uh, my friends yeah. here. Uh, we got a suggestion of H five. That's interesting. A, a space uh -huh. up. Uh, that, capping, yeah. Tapping, is okay. That... Well, I, I didn't even think of playing so far away from Black's Moyo. Um, I think the problem with, uh, let's see, the, the variation that I made was, uh, for instance, um, let's see if I can still find it. Um, no, maybe I can't. Um, my thoughts were that, uh, like, maybe Black plays somewhere way out into the center. Yeah, we've got a guess um, at uh, we've got a guess at like N ten or Q ten or is that sort of on the right track out there? That's on the right track. That's very good. So like okay. if white if black plays too far away, even something like this, I would say it gives white too much space to be um, doing something inside black's moyo, like for instance, right. like this, and then um, it would just be um, oh. since if we just go back a couple of moves, mm -hmm. black's moyo here is sort of uh, limited to the right half of the board. It's limited to mostly to the right side. Mm -hmm. um, but Black would like to get out into the center a little bit. But um, it's not as if Black has a Moyo that is covering the whole board. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, that, that's the reason why I think that moves like this are not really working here, like this right. or capping move um, like this. I think um, let's use the pencil here just to have fun. I think um, focusing on this area here, is probably not very relevant because of all the white walls and strong <laughs> white groups in Virgia. Um, Steven, Steven's going to be very disappointed. Steven wants to play Tengen. Uh, yeah. So m more like um, just solidly surrounding an area like this would be sort of ideal for black. Mm -hmm. And so actually this is, um, I'm surprised, well, someone did get the right answer. So um, actually black crawled once. That's why I couldn't find the variation. So I was showing you this one. Also, I thought of this move. This is another example of leaving too much space. Again, something like this. Too far, uh, yeah. So this is where Black played. Um, Black played this one forcing move, which is is forcing. Black can play an Atari next. And then Black played here. So it's, it's the double knight's move here. Um, further away than Gosegen thought of. Wow. Uh, but it doesn't... It's. It's unlike this move, which leave, leaves a lot of room for white to dive in. Um, it's a bit more difficult. It's very ambiguous, actually, because white does have some room to look there, but it's it's not as good as it would be in this case. That's a so, very interesting. Uh, let me ask you, I mean, you know, is that a move that you think uh, a top pro would find? It, it seems. Well, you know, now AlphaGo has played this move, this kind of ladder breaking move or making move. Um, a number of times. So it's a uh, pattern that we recognize now. I'd say that before AlphaGo, um, if I played that move, um, the other pros would be laughing at me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. And I would I, be laughing. It would be it would be like a joke almost. I know, I know. Yeah. No, I, I guarantee you that in an amateur game, everybody would be laughing. So that's mm -hmm. fascinating. But, but it seems, for, you know, actually the way you explained it, especially with the drawing the line, and thanks for that. I mean, you know, I kind of get that. And it's a, sort of, it is just, a, you know, not too far. It's almost like a um, like a Goldilocks move, you know, not too, not too, yeah. not too hot, not too cold. 
But I yeah, well, stop. I would be very happy actually uh, just going this far. Um, and the and evaluating the difference here yeah. is very difficult. Yeah. Um, it's just taking it one step further. And Zero likes, I think Zero has played this move too, um, my recollection. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this version of AlphaGo plays it a lot. It, it likes this shape. And it's interesting because Lila does have a tendency to be playing um, <laughs> move closer, in this case, the lower side, so on the other side of the board. Um, but it also depends on the board position. So in this case, as I was saying, I think there's a, a strong focus on this right, right area here, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it um, more important for black to be staying on the right half of the board. Mm -hmm. Or close to the center. Of my but the other thing that I like about it is that, you know, I was just instinctively looking over to, you know, because when you think about ladders, you know, you think about trying to you know, create the, the ladder uh, to mm -hmm. fix it. And so you go across the board. But as you showed, I mean, almost anything you do over there just doesn't work out well for black. It's, it's too easy for white and just a couple of moves. So you know, like this, any move that is going to um, affect the ladder is going to be a locally it's going to be a, a move that helps white right uh, anything on the lower side and this this leaves all of that uh lots of play on that lower side now well the reason that i'm saying that i would feel more safe with this move and just a little bit uncomfortable with this move is that it does give some white white some uh space to do stuff like this which is well, the game move yeah, I, that, that was actually going to be what I was, I was going to, well, I don't have to ask now because that is the yeah, game. Yeah, well, now, because... now I get to ask you, what do you think Black is going to do about that? Oh, man. All right, well, listen, uh, we had some, we, our, our folks came up with uh, with some good answers, so let's, yeah. let's put it out there. Um, yeah, I was just looking because that's, even if I managed to find this move, uh, that is a very good counter. I mean, it really... You don't want to go back and, and play close because that would just say that you should have played there in the first place, I would think. Um, well, for the time being, uh, if white runs out from the ladder, um, it looks bad. So black has to do something about that. Well, somebody wants to Tanuki, but I, I have a feeling Tanuki, Tanuki sounds... Tanuki sounds... White would just, allowing white to escape from the ladder in this Yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so All that, right, that's... So. That's actually a bit of a misleading hint, but um, it's, it's true. <laughs> you, you like to do that. Yeah. Um, somebody wants to attach, um, which yes. I was trying to read okay. out. That, that this is a very human, but... a very human choice. Um, I like that. Someone wants to play here, right? Mm, um, I'm, I'm assuming is, so. It's certainly this is very, very logical for a human being, because it both it both keeps the borderline secure. It also uh, keeps the ladder good for black. Even mm -hmm. if white plays a hunter here, black can pull back. And white doesn't break into the moyo, and white is not going to escape with that stone. But the problem here is that white is getting, black is getting pushed around. White's getting too many forcing oh, moves there. Oh, man, that's, yeah, that, that doesn't work. It's not good. Um, I, have, I didn't check the score, but this is, um, it's probably just bad. It's a very human-like move. Uh, but the problem is that humans have a tendency to sort of cling with their first idea. Like it's, I told you. It's bad to allow white to escape from the ladder. So the only idea that comes naturally is to stop that. Right. Uh, given that, if black plays something like this, it's probably worse because it leaves this hole here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so some people are talking about just taking, but that just can't possibly be right, I would think. Actually, uh, taking would be, um, I don't know, maybe it would be better than this move. Um, it would be a good move. But it would leave some space for white would not uh, be using it immediately. But there's a lot of space there. Um, in fact, it's a bit questionable whether this exchange was really good for black or not. Mm. It's uncertain. So that that's sort of the thing is that when you make a move like that and you got to back it up, right? And since you know, that makes it, I don't know. Uh, somebody likes O O eleven. That's interesting. That looks odd, but that's um, right. It's so right. Odd. It's right, yeah. Oh, computer. Uh, That's good. This is very good. Some, now, the, uh, the funny thing about this move is that um, it doesn't stop the it doesn't fix the ladder. Right, right. It doesn't fix the ladder, but AlphaGo doesn't care. <laughs> um, so this is actually very 
um, I, I learned a lot from this because it doesn't matter. It's not only that AlphaGo doesn't care. It doesn't matter that White can uh, escape from the ladder now. All right, it was really bad. Like, like, like so, if so, I could so. play something like this and White escaped from the ladder, there would be no way to put this back together again. And it would be very serious. Uh, but in this case, in the game, um, it doesn't matter that White can escape from the ladder. And um, it's, it's very educational, I think. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, is, is Black going to use this to uh, seal off the territory, treat those upper stones lightly? Exactly. Very good. Uh -huh. Like if Black tried something like this, it would probably be an overplay. Uh, Black would need to back off here, and White would get um, forcing moves on the side, and it would just be too easy for White. Um, this, this oh, oh, that's so painful. Ow. So Black chases the ladder. It's going to be a failed ladder, um, as if it was like, uh, for instance, Leela having um, a bug. Um, it, it messed up the ladder, but it's actually going to be, I think it's going to be good for Black. I, I, I like Black in the finished position where Black is squeezed. That's very clever. There is a, actually, there is another interesting sub-variation. I checked out what happens if Black, um, instead of playing the squeeze here, Black could try to kill White. And it would be a disaster, of course, because once White gets more than one liberty here, Black has to back off to five to protect the connection. White gets to attack Black on the side. So right. uh, the Black side is going to die. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. not good. No. So, so Black plays the squeeze here. White can push through once. So that sort of gives Black an awkward shape. Uh, but now White has to back off to, to capture three stones. So we get to this position. And so this is, Black did not immediately play it, but Black has this forcing move. Um, and the black stone at A looks sort of weird. It looks like it's misplaced, but actually in this case, it's a lot better than the white stone at B. Clinging, to, fact, that wall, clinging to that wall of stones. Yes. It makes a difference. Um, that's why you have a, a C mark there also. It makes a difference when white tries to cut black with a move at C, that stone at A is going to participate in the fight. So this is actually, I sort of like it for black. It's it's a close game. It's a it's a even result, I might say. But White is taking territory. Um, these three stones here, they were right next to a White group that was already alive. I'm talking about this group in the corner. For sure, already, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's just the territory, and some extra um, potential towards the upper side. <clears throat> um, but Black's thickness is actually more than it was before. Black has the tempo, so I like this for Black. I love it. And and also, it's pretty well driven, right? I mean, white really doesn't have a lot of options. I mean, it's a... It's well, a uh, white's only option was um, way back here when white escaped from the ladder. That was the, the la last choice that white had. Like, white could have played away. Right. Uh, white could have played something like this, for instance. It would have been a completely different game. But when white does that... Um, it could be that um, as, as the fight here progresses, um, pretty soon it's going to be, it's not going to be viable anymore for White to do that. Like uh, the variations like this would suddenly become real possibilities mm -hmm. for Black to kill the whole side or something. Right. And so uh, this is the only timing where White can escape. And once once White has done that, it's a forced sequence. What Like White has no choices. And well, although you might say it's sort of planned by Black, uh, Black doesn't have any choices either. This is the only, only way that Black can hold the position together. So it's pretty forced, the whole sequence here. Wow. Very Black cool. Kicks. And now we're going to see Black take the offensive on the lower side. And White jumps here. Um, wow. I still don't like this move. White's looking at the cut at A, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but this is a bit too close to the right side. And... Um, and I immediately knew that this is the move that I would play. This is the shape move. Um, like it's further out into the center than a, a diagonal move or a, a knight's move. And uh, the weak point at A, let's just make a variation for that. This weak mm -hmm. point here is, is yes. not a weak point. It's not a weak point because white can play the attachment here and black is in trouble. Like um, even if white just um, squeezes with seven, it's, it's going to be a negative 
result for black. Mm. Or white could play more strongly, actually. But this is just an example. This is already bad for black. Wow. Um, Very heavy. Black has no way of, of saving both the two stones and this stone with good shape. Like, um, black stones are weaker than white. Uh, white has forcing moves towards the corner, like these two points would usually be forcing. So black, white has a number of ways to handle this and almost always going to be good for white. So black's actually not going to even try to do that. Um, it's a good question. What is black going to do at this point? Black would probably be moving off to the to the left, uh, maybe something like this. And it would give white much easier shape, like even if white plays here or if white does something like this. Um, it's much better for white to have a little distance from this relatively black, uh, well, relatively strong area for black. White wants to have some healthy distance away from that wall. Mm -hmm. So I like this better. Um, and Lila supported me in this. Lila agreed. Um, and so I think I think that maybe this is a problem move. I, I don't. I sort of don't. I still don't like this move. Mm. And and the game the game variation, it does get a bit difficult for white here. Uh, black um, jumps to attack from behind. And white um, jumps out once. And um, there's always the possibility that uh, AlphaGo is going to sacrifice some stones. So you don't really want to be like black could probably capture something here. Um, there's always potential for white to be doing something from the outside. Um, I, yeah, that's probably a bit sloppy. Maybe here. I don't know exactly what, but white can always get something on the left side. It's pretty uh, common for the computer not to actually just go for the local profit here. And to black is going to do better by getting a big attack going. It, it mm. makes sense. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way human pros think, too, in this kind of position. Did you, uh, did you check the stats on this? Is, is black slightly ahead now? Black is slightly ahead. Um, but, you know, um, this game actually, with all the fighting, it's going to be a very close game throughout. Okay. Okay. Um, so, like, it's, it's so close that um, the numbers that Leela give you, gives you, um, you know, it, it's working with a set, well, it, it's a bit, um, I, I sort of work my way but, um, back and forth between Leela and Katako. Mm-hmm. I use both and try to, but Karago was giving very close scores throughout the game. Yeah, no, I was just wondering because I, looking at this sequence, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with your your problem with that jump by white, and it feels it feels like white, and, and I really like your alternative, which really kind of puts the pressure on black. Right. But it, this in in the game sequence, black looks pretty comfortable. Well, the whole sequence looks very difficult for white. And um, but it turns out to be a very close game, which is actually pretty common with AlphaGo games. Sure. It's, and it's probably true. Basically, it's probably true. It's just that a human player uh, getting into such a difficult variation would have a lot of trouble playing the correct moves. Right. Right. Um, and I think that's basically it's a um, it's a very natural thing. I think a human player would, even though theoretically, like if the computer plays it, maybe it's a close game, but it would be very difficult for a human to be playing with white in this position. Mm -hmm. and relatively easy for black. Um, I was I, I did make a variation to show that black here is just um, securing the connection, um, adding a stone here. Without that, like uh, this also would be a good point for black to play, but white would get to cut black off. And in this variation, we're going to see that black has some issues with the right side. White gets some extra forcing moves towards the right side. Um, black with the weak point here. Next white's going to play a placement here, and black doesn't have eye shape. This this would, maybe we should do the variation for that. Yeah, let's Just take a look at that. Variation first. I'm going to have black answer, and white gets to play here. Um, now white has some forcing moves towards the black corner. Black's group in the center is not 100% alive. So white should be able to handle this, this weak group that white has. So that's my um, viewpoint here. In this position, like if black does something like this to capture uh, two stones on the lower side, white can play here. Um, there's no good way for black to handle this. Like um, maybe black could live if black played here. Yeah, I think black could live if black played here. Um, 
allowing white to capture two stones already actually mm. or, or white could just play here again uh black has to play something like this to live and white gets the two stones so this would just be so easy for white and um, a big gain in territory too uh, like white would be gaining more than 10 points here in this trade yes, and it would be sense. more than and more than making up for the loss here which is uh, there's still some white, yeah. yeah and white get an attack in the center white's 100 white's 100 percent alive um even if black connects here white has a forcing move here which means that the white stones as they are they're already alive white already has two eyes right but black also has those stones on the outside that he's got to worry about yeah well the point is that now white can attack for yeah. instance upper side and has nothing like um this right white yep. right side yep. i'm just, just looking at that yeah yeah which makes a big difference like otherwise yeah. white would have to add stones to it so that's yeah. just not an option for black no no it's terrible so allowing this cut would force black to play that extra move inside black's territory it would give white an extra tempo so it's important for black to connect up here it's interesting that even AlphaGo plays this squeeze. It's probably pretty meaningless. With all those eyes, there's no way that that white group would be involved in a, a fight to capture. So it, it would. this is sort of equal to for black playing just here. It's the same thing. There's no difference when whites what, when the whites group has something like three or four eyes already. It mm -hmm. doesn't make any difference. But yeah. I found it interesting AlphaGo liked to play <coughs> anyway. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry, people were just asking about that. Now it's one of the same thing because it uh, it just seemed kind of pointless, but it's know. a very human like move actually. It, it is, it is. It's, it's a and, I, I, I can make you take it. Right, yeah. And in general practice, like if usually it's reducing the number of liberties for this white group in the upper right. Sure. And so if if there was some potential of some kind of a um, even a very remote potential of some kind of a semi fight to capture coming up then there would be some meaning in reducing the liberties once. But like in this case, it's um, it's even too remote to be called remote. It's just, just the fact that white has these basic eyes here. Um, yeah, almost yeah. impossible for black to take them away. Um, right. Like um, hypothetically, we could have white have black play something like 10 moves and it would, they would go away. But, yeah. <laughs> But it's interesting. Of course, it doesn't lose anything. There's, um, it's, it's it's okay. It doesn't right. make any difference. Right. Um, and white pushes out once. And you see white's really busy here. Um, but is is basically when black attacks here, white is ready to throw away two stones. So that's the idea. Um, these two stones here are not as important as uh, let's use the pencil again to show the area. This area, uh, controlling this area is actually more important than saving the two stones. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense to me. Um, and white plays here. This is this is a point where if white had played here, um, this would be very dangerous. And even if black allows it to live, like black could play something like this and be very cautious, it would still be a lot of moves white, um, of, of almost worthless moves that white has to play. Um, so this is just in the variation where black has allowed white to live, but it's still, still very good for black. Mm. Just playing very safe. Um, so that's not that's not a good idea for white. It's much better for white to move out and put some pressure on black. White is, again is is trying to threaten to cut here. I'm worried about that cut. Probably shouldn't be, but I am. Uh, it's, it's not a big problem. You know that AlphaGo like likes to leave that kind of. Problem. I know. And white jumps into the three three point. Um, white does have some potential here in the corner, but black is ready to allow it to live. Like for instance, if white played here, white could live, um, but it wouldn't have a very good effect on black on the outside. Um, like it would actually strengthen black on the outside and black would have potential to just swallow up white in the center there. Um, oh, the fact wow. that white has no eyes, no extra eyes for that group. So um, white leaves it. Um, we'll see in the game that white is leaving some potential to make use of this stone in the other direction. That is, um, crawling, crawling here um, is a way that white can sacrifice the corner and make an eye on the right side. So white's leaving that option 
um, and some extra um, help for, for these stones that White has on the outside. The potential to make an eye on the side there makes a big difference. So uh, Black uh, takes the move to live in the corner. And this is pretty much, it's, um, it's not alive. <laughs> it's not alive, but White's not going to go after it. Uh, so White plays a peep here. And this move basically is saying, go ahead and make a, a life. Like if White wanted to kill it, White would go into this variation. And that can kill it. But Black does get this extra forcing move here with the ladder. And um, already there's, there's still a lot of bad odds. Black would start in the center probably. But there is that move at A that could happen later on. Um, because white will be happening after this white's going to be focusing on trying to live in the center of the board. Uh, and so like if, if there was a black stone, the most direct threat is if there's a black stone that comes here in the process, black would be able to escape at A. And that would be very a very strong attack against white on the lower side. Mm -hmm. So just the extra oddity there, the potential there for black makes it makes this a different uh, a difficult variation for white to be going into just trying to kill the whole thing would have a bad effect on white in the center. So I'd say this makes sense. And it's alive. So white counterattack. So now white is cutting off the three stones here. Wow. So uh, sort of the tables turn at this point. Now white mm -hmm. is starting to attack. Uh, but black gets some counterattacking potential, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like this. And so Black says, are you going to cut? Uh, at this point, the Black Stones are not so easy to kill. There's, they still have plenty of room to run out in the center. So it, it's very, um, it makes sense that White is not going to cut that dummy point and is going to try to force from the center. So uh, White plays this move in the center, and White is looking both at this cut and this cut. And you might notice that in this, all the fighting here that is happening, uh, in the lower right, and um, it, we could include the lower left also. Though in this whole area, all of the fighting, you might notice that uh, Black is taking territory. The whole process here, Black is getting. Uh, let's okay, let's. Black got a nice territory here. <coughs> so this whole area is pretty much Black's territory. Mm -hmm. Although I did tell you that Black White has a way to live in the corner. Right. It's not like That's right, right. Um, Black got to um, erase this area. So this is a live group now. So that white territory is gone. So there's a lot of immediate profit that Black has gotten out of this. And, and so white, white really white, doesn't have much. White just escaped from, with that weak group on the, in the lower right. And most of white's potential on the lower half of the board is, is gone now. So white is trying to get, so from this point on, white is trying to get some potential to attack Black mostly. Right, because folks are just asking who is ahead, and I think you just answered that because, you know, technically on the board, black is ahead on points, but white's got that, uh, what, those, two, those two potential cuts, and so there's going to be some attacking to uh, it make territory while attacking, I'm assuming, right? In a human game, we would say that black has a lead in territory. Right. So, but that, that's not really the way AlphaGo is judging the game, I guess. Uh -huh. Because there is some potential for white to attack. There is some potential for white on the upper half of the board, upper side. Right. right. So this is this move. It's nice. Black jumps out towards the upper side. Oh. Still putting some pressure on white. I don't like it. And white crawls. So white's um, sacrificing the corner to make some extra eye space uh -huh. on the side. Uh -huh. And if white plays next to C, white has an eye there. Right. Um, uh, instead, white plays here. It's interesting that white actually needs to play something here. White could have played at C, or white could play the game move, the bamboo joint. Uh, the bamboo joint is better as far as territory is concerned because it's threatening to save those two stones. Mm -hmm. Why did black? Why did white need to do this? White needs to do it because if white plays away, black can actually push through here and then wedge between the two white stones. Obviously, uh, if white plays here, we're going to see black squeeze white, and that would just be easy. So um, if white captures the two stones, though, white doesn't have enough room to make life. So that's, for the time being, it's dead. Well, 
it's just dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's no good for white. Right. So black has this move where black can push through here. And if white cannot do anything about it, that means black gets the whole right side, which is big. So white plays here to stop that, taking away any good move for black on the right side, and also is threatening to save the two stones, which is, as far as territory is concerned, it's close to 10 points. It's pretty big. Um, so white plays, but black did not answer it. Um, this is very typical of AlphaGo. I don't know, really, I don't understand completely why this forcing move is played now. Um, but I guess it's it, maybe it, um, in some of the variations, it takes away some of white's eye space, I guess. And oh, then black plays away. And this is uh, what we call a vital um, a, a shape move. Uh, because with this move, um, and white plays here, black's issues in this game are the cutting point here. This is going to stay around for a while. This is something we have to remember. Um, it's, this cutting point is going to be an issue until white finally forces black to connect here. So we, we have to remember that black eventually has to connect at the star point there and the cutting point here also. Um, and with this, with this knight's move here, um, obviously, just to go back a move, this was threatening to push through and cut here. So that's why we see the white move here making the connection. Um, it also it weakens the threat. It weakens the threat that white has with these two cuts um, very subtly. Both of the cuts actually work. But like, for instance, uh, why don't we have white play one cut? Why don't we have white, um, let's move one move forwards. Black played um, towards the upper side. We can see black is erasing white's potential on the upper side now. Let's have white play a cut here. Um, now, black can play here, threatening the wedge. White has to answer on this side, and there you are. The other cut is gone now, because um, white cannot cut at this point now, because white is going to be cut off. Mm -hmm. so, um, so black would be able to handle just the one weak group, uh, for instance, with something like this, and white would have to connect here before thinking of cutting at eight. So the same thing works in the other direction, like if white had played um, this move cutting this way, Again, uh, locally, something like this might happen uh, with this forcing move, which Black is, does not even have to play yet. But with this forcing move, the cut is gone. And so it's something like this. So all what Black has to do is handle the one weak group, um, which, which should be relatively easy. Um, so there's a kind of interrelated uh, situation here where uh, the while both of the cutting points are still there, uh, their effectiveness is is uh, sort of diluted, you might say. Mm -hmm. um, and and white is here. Uh, white finally takes the eye on the right side, and black is just um, going for more territory. So we can see black is sort of um, trying to enter the end game here. Uh, if you give a human reason for the, the black moves here, black is trying to sort of um, simplify and enter an end game here where black has more territory. So black's... Well, I mean, if if, uh, if black doesn't die somewhere, then white just can't possibly have enough territory. You would think so, wouldn't you? I, I would. I would. I'd probably be wrong, but I would think so. <laughs> well, it's actually a very close game. Um, and the point is that the, the white potential is very hard to see, um, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Like right. um, even myself, I would have trouble telling you, um, telling you what white's potential is. But well, I was just going to ask. Have, you. I want, I want uh, to know on the left where... side. Okay, I can, I'll map out get, areas get the, in this whole pen. area. Get, uh -huh. Yeah, the pen. This whole area here, although black has played a number of moves on it, those black stones are still weak. And so I would say that um, it's going to take Black a lot of more, lot more moves to get a um, fixed position there. But <coughs> so I think White has potential in this area, potential in this area, and it's all uh, in order to really realize that. Obviously, it would be very inefficient just to try to make some territory there. But 
um, in the context of an attack against black. White has some potential to do that. Okay. So um, there's the fact that black still has to deal with that cut at A, which means that white has some potential in this general area also. And these are all small areas, but every one of them, um, each area is basically controlled by white. And so there's potential for white, but um, relatively small potential for black. It means that white's going to pick up points. It's, it's invisible uh, territory attached to white's thickness. I love it. I love it. But actually, that, that makes sense. And each of those, even though they're small, like I'm guessing 10, 12 points, but that, that, that adds up. The maximum. Like It's more likely that the various territories will be smaller than that, but they, they will add up. And the point is that while Black has some territory here, some territory here, Black has more territory at the time being, nice territory here, these are all territories that are not going to expand. And even this area here, which right. is relatively wide open, um, even if Black plays another move there, it's going to be difficult for Black to get, say, 10 points, even adding a stone there. Um, like you might say that, uh, what if Black plays uh, something like this? Doesn't that look like a territory? It's probably not a territory. Like it, White would still have ways to, for instance, jump in here. Um, White has groups on both sides that would potentially connect up to that. Oh, wow. And there's also the fact that Black doesn't really have time to do that because of the cutting point. Um, the cutting point at A, the, that I've marked with A in this. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So Black is continuing to play, trying to find moves that are not connecting that Dame point. Uh, Black would rather play something that makes some territory or reduces White's potential in the area. So Black is sort of struggling around here. And White, you can see that White is playing from the left side. So White is one move away from creating a territory here. White needs one more move on the side. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if White had played something like this, then we would have had a, a side territory. Um, something that we'd, we'd be able to count and say it's close to 20 points, maybe. Yeah, that's nice. It's, it's not time for White to do that yet. And so White, again, is putting pressure. Now White has two cutting points. I should have, I should have oh, marked this. Oh, nice. White has a cutting point at A and a cutting point at B. Uh, two cutting points there. So White's still putting a lot of pressure on Black. But we have to remember that there's this double peak uh, weak point here, which is a problem. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, it yep. was always a problem. I think uh, a few moves back, I actually made a variation for mm -hmm. that. Let's see if I can find it. No, not that one. This one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, there, this is back a few moves. I talked about the peep here. It looks like it's trouble for white. Um, but it's trouble for black, too, if black actually goes into that variation because black gets cut off too. And white can actually live on the right side with the peep at A being very severe. Um, black will probably answer here, um, but then white can cut at B. Right. So A and B are Mi, white's gonna live on the right side. And actually black is, um, basically black has cut himself off on the upper side. So black doesn't really gain from the peep yet, but it's always a factor in black handling that group in the center of the board. So like in this position, although uh, it looks like there's no way for Black to connect up with the cutting point of A and the cutting point of B, mm -hmm. Black does have that uh, double peep that um, could cause trouble for White. Or you could, I could make a variation showing this move too. Like there's this move with the wedge sometimes, um, which would be um, more trouble for White uh, with the cutting point here also. Mm -hmm. So this, this kind of stuff would work fairly well um, when eventually black gets a stone around here, there would be that, that wedge there, which would be a very strong attack against white. And you might notice the whole white group is not completely settled. I'm, I'm noticing nobody is settled. The whole middle is just a hot mess. Seriously. Right, yeah. I mean, There's a lot is... of pressure being put on black here locally, but white does have some weak points too. Oh. So black curls around. And you can see black's cut off, completely cut off here. With the two cutting points, there's this yeah. cutting point, this cutting point. But like to... I told you, uh, White has the weak weak points in this area too. So okay. it's, it's, all right. it's difficult for White to be 100% set on cutting Black. But White does want to cut Black off from these stones. These stones are sort of like the final 
um, the final destination for White. White wants to be able to get an attack on these stones eventually. Yeah, I've been I've been looking at something like M fourteen or something that kind of M M fourteen. Yeah, that would be a direct attack. Uh, White really needs to start with black in the center and get some extra moves towards the upper side, some right. extra stones. In there. Right, right, so right. that's that's what White is doing here. It makes sense. So yeah. black connects once. So that's gotten rid of one cutting point. And White is not actually going to go after the whole group. Like that would be so dangerous for White to do it that way. Um, like even if Black, it, um, we're going to see Black play this move later. But if White does that and Black plays something like this, already White's position is very dangerous because this would give give Black the peep. And in this case, uh, White has to worry about the cut here also. So White has too many cutting points to worry about. Aye, aye, aye. Um, or if white just connected here, uh, the center connection would be falling apart. Like even if black just played, uh, sorry, that was a misclick. Um, even if black just played something like uh, some kind of combination leading to this, there would be the cut cutting point here and the three white stones on the outside. These three stones would be in trouble too. All right. So white's not about to try to kill that black group. Um, white would rather force black to connect um, useless points. So that's the meaning of this move. And black finally is going to be forced to connect. But does not forget to cut white once first. And then black plays here. Now with the forcing move at B, um, black is always forced at B. <coughs> and of course, the important thing is black got rid of that cutting point at A there. And because the white group on the right side is not alive yet, it means that uh, black has a forcing move here, the mark point here, mm -hmm. which is going to help black a little bit when black plays a knight's move here to try to connect up to the upper side. <coughs> so it's, it's all linked up, which is what, what makes, that's what makes AlphaGo's game so exciting because everything just, is interrelated here. It's all these so, dangers. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just gorgeous. It really and Capturing, is. yeah, for white, capturing the upper side and sacrificing the lower right is just not an, an option. So white has has to um, has to be careful. Let's just leave the one forcing move, this forcing move that I've marked here. Um, white will always have to answer that because the right side is not alive as it stands. So white answers here. Uh, black has to answer that, and we can see that white is just one move away from getting a living safe here. Mm -hmm. If white cuts at the mark point, white's going to be alive. If white cuts here, white's going to be connected. So white's okay. So white gets to play away. Uh, this was just a forcing move. And now white's going to attack the upper side. So finally white, uh, this is the final attack for white. Um, and so black plays here. <laughs> this is actually helping black on the upper side. You might uh, find it hard to I probably just, didn't see that. Yeah, I, I just did a double take. You <laughs> go back and check the day. I just, come, I, I thought you did a click. Right. Yeah, I saw it. That was a click. Uh, when black plays has the forcing move here, uh, black could actually start playing with this move. Black could play here, and white would have to connect. That would be one way to do it. Black has that forcing move at three. It means that if black plays here, it's going to be relatively easy. Or if black plays here, it's going to be relatively easy to connect up to the center. So black has no problem. But this is a big move. It's a really big move uh, towards the corner. Um, it's, it's a big move creating a, a weak point here where black can play a peep. So this is actually helping black on the upper side. Just uh, believe me. Okay. No, no. I, so oh. white, white, this is a forcing move. Um, yeah, I'm just showing you that variation. Black could have connected once. But, um, it, I, it's not an important variation. Black lives on the lower side. And white plays, um, plays the cut at A. Now the cut at A, um, Obviously, it's taking away the forcing move for black at B. It's also um, strengthening white's group at C. So I'm talking about, let's mark more of the stones. It's, I'm talking about this group, which was actually not such a strong group. Um, so the fact that now white has the potential to connect up with this move. White also has some potential towards the upper side. But the, if white connects up here, now white will be connecting up to a living group. Uh, so with that, and of course the extension here, um, that has given White some extra security with mm. that group. Yeah. So it's um, 
it's a it's also for territory it's a big move it's a big move as far as territory is concerned mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so now black has to deal with the um upper side and yeah this move this move you might say it, it took me by surprise but it's mm -hmm. a very uh, um when i oh, examined yes. it what well, you know, the expected the move, white, white is pushing here, white is threatening to cut black off here. A very natural move would be to connect here. It's not as if the black group is going to die. But no, black is not going to do that. Black didn't do that, uh, but played the knight's move. And actually, as far as territory is concerned, this is probably better um, because uh, this is reducing white's area, white's potential here. So this area is more important than uh, the uh, stones, I these see. Two stones here. This move is hard to find because it allows white to push through. Push through. Uh, let's see. When do white push through? White push through now. It allows white to push through here. So it looks like this move here that black played, which was supposed to defend something, it looks like it's failing. That's the that, that's the feeling you get. Right, but actually, right. um, it's it's functioning because black is going to um, improve that with moves like. I'm marking here these two moves on the side, uh, and the actual execution of that is is not simple, but um, the idea is to get a better shape on the side while giving up these two stones here. Let me uh, ask you something. Um, would you say that we're still in in middle game, or it almost feels like maybe uh, end game has has started? It's it's something. It could be called a middle game because the black group there is not settled, mm -hmm. um, but obviously. Even in a human game, the players would be calculating the end game. It would be a position where um, people would try, be trying to count the territory. And so it's, um, you could call it end game, but there is the fact that um, if black messes up, that group is going to die. Um, so in that context, you would call it a middle game position. I see. I see. Okay. So yeah, and you can see white played a end game move here, which is also it also has some middle game meaning because it's taking away this move. It's strengthening the white group here, strengthening the connection that white mm -hmm. has towards the lower side. So the, they're end game moves, but they're also um, have to do with the life and death of stone sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so white pushes through here, and black plays the honey. So next, when black plays the honey here, black is threatening to cut at C. So for instance, if white played here. Uh, black would be able to cut here. Um, now, if black had cut immediately, if black had cut immediately, um, then white would have a number of ways to deal that with that. White might just play a honey here. And if black plays here, white can play the diagonal move here. Threatening a snapback. Um, this looks like it's not going to work for black. It's not a ladder. So this would just be giving up too many stones in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, playing the honey there. Playing the honey here, that black is setting up the cut here. In which case, white would have, um, like, cutting here to go after two stones in the center is not really an option. That's just bad for white. Mm. So white uh, captures the two stones, and black plays this. So you can see that black got two very important move, point, moves here. Um, although it might seem a bit strange that black does not follow up with the hane, like you would maybe expect black to extend here. This would be a very natural move. Sure. Um, but when black plays there, white gets some extra forcing moves here. And uh, this black stone is completely cut off now. Wow. Gives white some extra potential in the center of the board. That was going to be, uh, yeah, that, that's a nice area. And then, then we just enter the end game. Um, and actually, the upper side, although it looks like, you know, you usually um, focus very much on the side territories, it's not going to turn out to be that big a territory. So the center, in this case, peeping here to sort of keep a loose connection with this stone is more important. So white covers the side and black gets some side territory too. And now we're really uh, into the end game. Mm. Um, it's very close. This is a position where weaker players would have a tendency to cut here, probably. Um, but actually, cutting loses territory. Um, 
actually, I, I, I might amend that white move. It might be better just to play an Atari. But this is not as effective in reducing white side territory as the game move where black clamps here. Mm -hmm. This is taking away more of white's territory, so it's more profitable. And both players are playing reasonable, reasonably big moves. I'll just show you the end game. Mm -hmm. There is some point where I made an I tried a different end game sequence, so we can see that. Um, look. Every time I tried it, it was a very uh, a small win for black. So I didn't actually find any sequences where white could win. Really? Yeah, this is where I, I actually left a, one of the end game sequences in. Um, I, I found it interesting to see what would happen if white, well, this is just a forcing sequence, but then would what if white played um, this move, which looks fairly big on the upper side, white seven? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd Finishing up. The upper side territory. Right. Um, black is going to play this squeeze, and black has this extension here, which is fairly effective in reducing white's territory in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. So this was also a fairly big move. Um, and it's a relatively simple end game. So I, I went to the end of this end game, and see. Um, I think I found that black was winning by a half point or one and a half points. And you're saying there's not uh, really any chance for white. So where did where did white lose its chance? I couldn't find any winning variations for white. Like I'm I'm sort of tempted to go way back. I'll, I'll talk about it after I'm finished talking about the end game here. So this was a point where the game move was this one, and usually you want to go for the side. So like if if we're talk in the end game. More than moves like this in the center, you would be looking at side territories most of the time. Usually right. it makes sense right. to play. In fact, most cases you're looking for moves on the second line or first <coughs> line. Point. Um, and so I thought it was significant to make this variation where white does end up playing um, that move, um, that this one, that move surrounding the side area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it had the same result. Like this is the game just to go quickly through the game. Uh, black uh, gets to reduce white's. Uh, side territory there, and it leads to more complications because there's going to be a co there, and it gets exciting. Um, and this co goes on for a while, and you know AlphaGo does sort of strange stuff when it has a co, and it, it's hard to follow sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it, there were there were no points where the game uh, was a win for White. I don't think so. The game uh -huh. goes on just to take you to the end. This is where I um, I finish the game slightly differently to show that uh, black was uh, three-fourths of a stone. So it's a half point uh, counted with Japanese rules. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you could say uh, one and a half points. So it's just a different way of counting it. It, does, it doesn't right. change the win-loss result. Right. So like, I would just be tempted to go back to that move I didn't like. Uh, let's see if I can find it, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the jump, the two-space jump. The two space jump. Yeah, so it's, the, it's, it's yeah, way back. It's, it's, it's farther yeah. back than that. Yeah, and, and, I, I, and I like. I gotta I say, have to touch I, up my use of the controls here. Yeah. <laughs> it's show, yeah. I I like your move much better. Yeah. So I I would actually just because um, it's impossible for me to calculate, but this is the one move in the game um, where I. Um, I don't know why AlphaGo didn't play this move, and I, I don't like the move it chose. So wow. this would, um, and you know, AlphaGo, when it plays against itself, um, uh, um, the more and more I study them, the, the games almost tend to, always tend to be very close. They, um, a half point difference is sure. very normal, and, and usually the games stay that way throughout the game. And so um, I would be tempted to go back here. Although obviously, you know, I, I wouldn't be looking at the board at this point and calculating a half point difference. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not. It's beyond my abilities. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's it's way too complicated. But it just feels it feels. I don't know. It has a better a better feel. I mean, just because when when white, if you look at the game, and then and then when black gets to jump up, mm -hmm. it just it just feels. Uh, it feels bad. Yeah. It does. It does. It feels bad and. So I was sort of surprised that it leads into a half point uh, difference. Like I think the game uh, throughout the end game, 
um, it was just uh, it would be clear that it's a half point difference one way or the other, mm -hmm. but it would still be very difficult for uh, a top pro. Right, right. Well, wow, some fascinating. I mean, I love the whole ladder thing in the beginning, and thanks for going into that in some depth because you know, and, and that sort of little mini mini mirror go you know thing with the oh, yes. with the uh, similar uh, Josecki's is sort of fascinating. And and I have to say, for you know an amateur player, counterintuitive because you know it gives you these sort of free floating walls. Yeah, um, you don't know what to do with them. Not a clue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alfred was showing you that you. You leave those walls alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't try to do something with it. Yeah. Great game as always, Michael. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, just a reminder uh, check out the Go Congress, gocongress.org. Um, we're, uh, I, I, uh, there's going to be some interesting things. I'm, I'm not quite free to talk about them yet, but I'm in touch with the organizer and it's going to be some very interesting things. If you, let me just uh, give you a hint that if you like what, uh, what we're doing with these commentaries, then you're definitely going to like what, uh, some of the things that are going to be featured at this year's go Congress. So more to come on that. Uh, of course you can follow all of this stuff. Uh, the news go news at, uh, usgo.org. Um, including uh, we just posted a report on a, on a big tournament that's been uh, postponed because of the, um, uh, the virus outbreak. So uh, always breaking news on uh, all things go. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if you want to support these commentaries, uh, Stephen will put up the, uh, the link to make those online contributions. Um, <clears throat> we're working on our uh, broadcast schedule for February. Uh, so keep an eye on usgo.org. If you're not already subscribed to the e-journal, by the way, I'd highly recommend that. And you can sign up on, on the uh, usgo.org website. All right, that's going to do it uh, for this week's edition. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you very much, Michael. And we will see you all next time.